Alright guys, here we go. Pokemon Stadium 2, part 51. Second half of the Ultra Bowl uh, thing in the Challenge Cup in round 2. And uh, yeah, so the first battle here is up against a Fisherman, and every one of his Pokemon except for Quillfish is gonna be weak to grass. Whoa, hold on here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Alright, let me just take a look at my team again really quickly here. Yeah, definitely gonna want him. Uh, I've got Noctowl here. Nothing really that great. Might use Pupitar. I don't really want to use Pupitar, though. Yeah. Alright. Go with Lantern, and... I guess we'll go with Venomoth. Sludge Bomb... Might be useful. I don't think I'm going to need to use my third Pokemon here. Just looking at this guy's team, I don't really, you know... Obviously he might have Ice Beam, which is going to threaten me, but, you know... I'm going to be able to Giga Drain things, so even if this Seedra is faster than me, I'm still going to be able to just throw up the Giga Drain. But it's actually going to use Rain Dance here, so they're going to... He's just going to try and power up all his shit. All of his Pokemon probably have Hydro Pump or Surf. So that Rain Dance is obviously going to help, but, uh, yeah. So that's not quite going to take that thing out. Unfortunately, even though Giga Drain is the strongest, it is still only 60 power. And he actually goes for Aura Beam here, which I didn't expect. I'm not going to lie, but either way, I am going to be able to survive. And I am now down to three Giga Drains, which uh, may turn out to be a problem later on, but we'll see how that goes. So anyway, Cedra goes down. Now, I'm uh, going to go into his next Pokemon here, and it is Dugong. And this is, I was kind of afraid of this, because this Pokemon does have the Ice Typing. So I'm actually just going to switch out, go into Lantern, you know, to take either the Ice Beam Blizzard or Aura Beam that is coming my way. Is it Aura? I always called it Aura Beam. I guess it's Aura. Like Aurora Borealis. I don't know. It is Aurora. Strange. Anyway, so yeah, he's going to use that. That's going to hit Lantern for nothing. Uh, unfortunately, I do get an attack drop, but that doesn't really matter. Since none of my attacks are going to be of the attacking variety. So he looks like he's going to switch out. And I would assume he's going into Quagsire, and of course he is. So the spark, not going to do anything. But I should be able to get a continue here, because I am just going to switch out. Obviously he's going to go for the Earthquake or Dig. So I can just go into the Awesome... Not have to worry about it because he resists both of those attacks because they're both ground. Yeah. So we'll see just what happens here. And he is going to go for the dig, it looks like. So now the question is am I faster or is he faster? Uh. I'm going to go for Attract, because I don't want to be... I'm pretty sure I'm going to be quicker, yeah, definitely. So yeah, that's not going to do anything. I should have actually endured thinking about it now, but that doesn't really matter. Even if it would have crit, I wouldn't have done enough damage. So hopefully he won't switch out here, and he's definitely not going to switch out, which is pretty sweet. Because that's going to be a quad four effective. And it still survives! Very interesting. Uh, he's going to go for Dynamic Punch here. And, of course, it hits, because, you know, it always hits. So I'm just going to go for Double Edge here. I don't really want to waste a Giga Drain. Not that it really matters. And I'm going to hurt myself in Confusion. So that kind of sucks that he gets the hit on the Dynamic Punch. And this is starting to turn out bad. We do have berry juice, but who really cares about that? So I'm just going to switch out into Lantern here. And he hits twice with Dynamic Punch. I didn't even notice that. I, But yeah, twice in a row with Dynamic Punch. That kind of sucks. 
But since I know he's not going to go for, since I can, you know, kind of make up a mistake if he did go for Earthquake. But he is just going to keep going for Dynamic Punch. And it hits again! That's three for three on Dynamic Punch. I don't get it. Actually, what am I doing here? Well, actually, no, I can water gun it. Try to water gun it. But I'm going to hurt myself in Confusion. So I hurt myself twice in Confusion. He hits three Dynamic Punches. You can tell we're in round two just by that. Anyway, he is going to go for Dig again, so I'm going to have to go out into Blossom. I should have just done that originally, but it doesn't really matter. If I would have been able to get through, I could have hit him with a water gun, but as always, hurting myself in confusion every time. So this kind of sucks because now I'm going to have to switch back into Lantern after... Uh, What's it called? After I take down this Quagsire. So yeah, Dynamic Punch is pretty effective when it has 100% accuracy. So yeah, that's definitely taking down that Quagsire. Perhaps it's already taking a long time, but, you know, we gotta be careful here. Got to try and get all the perfect continues. Wait a minute, what am I doing? All right, there we go. Back in the lantern. Man, there's been so many switches in this battle. Holy crap! There's the Aurora Beam, or Aurora Beam, and it criticals, so all kinds of hacks coming into play here. So we'll see how much this uh, Spark hits for, but he's actually going to be quicker than me, and he's going to go for Rain Dance, so this next water attack may be a problem for me. Hopefully I can get a Paralyze on him, that'd be friggin' sweet. But of course the 30% chance of the Paralyze, not going to happen. With the rain in effect, uh, he's going to power up this waterfall. And, uh, yeah, it's still not going to do very much, though. So this should be an easy win. And, of course, I don't get another Paralyze, even though, you know, all these fucking hacks, whatever. So I'm going to be able to get a perfect continue, even though pretty much everything went against me in terms of random effects. So I'm just amazing, obviously, is basically what I'm trying to say here, but, uh, yeah. So anyway, that dugong is going to go down, and, uh, yeah. Yay for typing. That's sweet. That relieves me a little bit. Move on to the quarterfinal. And it's a dying woman. I think I've already made that joke, but either way, uh, yeah, a lot of things weak to um, ghost here and things. In fact, all. No, not Giraffe or Egg, but Dark. Dark is good against everything except for Murkrow. How many Dark attacks do I have on my team? None. So this could be a problem. This is gonna be this is gonna be a tough one. Uh, we're gonna go with Lantern though, because Lantern can deal with most of the team. I think I want to go with Noctowl. Noctowl can handle most of. The, well, now he's gonna have Thunderbolt here. What's it called? I'll go with what's his name? Charmeleon. And I'm just kind of scared with Pupitar. What is Pupitar gonna do? He's not good against anything. could go with Blossom, but what is... Nah, see, he's got two ghost Pokemon. Man, this is a tough one. I'll go with Noctowl, I guess. Wing attack, that's effective against everything, and Noctowl's kind of a tank. Hopefully it won't come to that, but this is going to be probably one of the toughest fights, just because of me not having anything good against any of his guys. So it's going to lead with Misdrevious. 
And, uh, yeah, I'm going to be leading with that lantern. Uh, I'm just going to go for the spark here, see what's up. Uh, he's obviously going to be quicker, and, of course, he's going to go for the confuse ray. So, here we go. It's going to start already. And, yep, I'm going to hurt myself. Cool. That's pretty sweet. That's great. It's going to be one of these battles that's just hacks battles, so that's great. That's going to go for headbutt, too, so it's got a flinch and a confusion proc. And that does nothing. And I'm actually confused no more, so that's pretty sweet. And unfortunately, I don't score a paralyze, and that does nothing. Come on. Come on. <sighs> so anyway, uh, yeah. So throughout this uh, this video, I've every time chance I've had to hit myself in confusion, I have, and that continues right now. Wow, this is ridiculous. Four for four on confusion. Mind you, I did snap out of it the first turn, but still pretty dumb. Anyway, she's just gonna go straight for Shadow Ball now, and that does way more than Headbutt. So this is really not looking good. I finally break through confusion to get my own confusion ray up. But of course it's holding a fucking bitter berry. Obviously, that's what it would be holding. Wow. This is really not good now. This is this is looking terrible. Oh man, this could be bad. This could be bad news bears. But I actually snap out of confusion this turn and get the confuse ray up again. But uh yeah, this is this is not good. Obviously, she's going to be faster, but she hurts herself in confusion, so finally something working my way. Hopefully, I can score a Paralyze here, because that would allow me another attack. But that's just not going to happen, unfortunately. I could really use another confusion hit here. Come on. Oh, man. Alright, so this is the third spark I've hit him with, so this should paralyze based on the... Uh, Law of odds. And it does. So that is freaking sweet because now I'm going to be able to finish him off and keep my lantern. So a lot of things going my way there. Oh, it took a critical at 8 HP. <laughs> Why don't you calm down, alright? It's going to be fine. It's going to die anyway. Don't worry about it. She's going to go into our next Pokemon here. It's Mr. Mime. Not really too sure what this thing's going to do. It's probably going to KO me here. And yes, it is. So unfortunately, it's got its Stab Psychic there. And that is going to... That's just going to devastate Lantern. So I'm going to go into Noctowl. Because I know Noctowl is more of a tank. And, can pro and it's got really good special defense. So it should be able to deal with this Mr. Mime. And I'm thinking if I want to go for the Toxic or the Wing Attack. And I want to go for the Wing Attack. It's going to go for Swagger here. So that's going to raise my attack by quite a bit. But I'm going to hit myself in Confusion. So the Confusion hacks... Pretty much everywhere here. This is just out of control for both of us. And so now he's going to go for Psychic. And I'm hoping this doesn't do too much. But it does like 70. So this is going to be bad here if I can't get through this. But I am able to punch through this time. Get that wing attack off. And that's going to do just over half. So uh, yeah, this is... I don't know what to say here. I'm going to be able to survive this, but uh, I'm going to need to not hit myself in confusion again. But never mind. I get critically hit when it obviously mattered. So we'll never know. This is going to be a freaking... This is this is tough here. I don't know what I can say right now. Obviously, I think Charmeleon will be faster, but man, he can't take too many attacks. He's not going to be able to take too many. I'm just going to just have to go for the Fire Blast here, but he's actually going to be quicker than me, so I thought I would be faster than Mr. Mime, but I guess not. Luckily, he misses with the Swagger. Hopefully, I don't get the same bad luck, but uh, I don't. And unfortunately, that doesn't take it down. A Stab Fire Blast from a Charmeleon? 
on a Mr. Mime? Come on. Darn it. So he's going to go for the swagger again. He is going to hit it this time. And that sucks. But uh, I am going to be able to punch through here and get the kill on that Mr. Mime. So now it's going to be each of us down to our last Pokemon. I'd really like to win this here and not have to do this again because I'm just I'm fearing this battle. And luckily it's Murkrow. That's huge because I do have the Rock Slide. And I don't think Murkrow has anything that great. Plus I've got the Swagger, so if I can just break through... It's going to use Sky Attack, so that's not good. I am confused no more. Hopefully this will take it out. And it does. Oh, man, that was close. Whoo. Whoo. Things working out there for me. That, uh, that, was, that was scary. I'm not going to lie. I was legitimately worried. Obviously not going to get the perfect continue, but I was just hoping to get the win on that one without losing any. So, whew, that was a tough one. It's tough when you don't have anything super effective. As I hit him with a super effective rock slide. Anyway, uh, so here we go. Uh, yeah, executive. And she's got a lot of normal types. Again, I don't have any fighting moves at all. So this is just going to be another tough battle. I do have Pupitar, though, so I can use that to my advantage. Uh, I don't even know what to do here. Uh, I'm going to go with Lantern, I guess, because it's Spark. But... And I guess I need another physical attacker. I guess I'll use Noctowl, too. Because what is Fire Blast going to do? Nothing. We already got things for coverage. So I'm going to need Pupitar to not go down. I don't know what type of person this is. It is a rocket, so it might be a toxic double-teaming person. Not sure. We'll find out. It'd be really nice to just get a Ancient Power raise right off the bat here. She's going to lead with Gramble, and I'm not going to lie, I don't like that. I think Gramble is probably her strongest Pokemon. I forgot I didn't have Earthquake. I just have Dig. So, yeah. I'm actually going to go for the Curse here, figuring... Uh, it's going to use a physical attack. And it is going to use a physical attack in Shadow Ball. And with the curse, that's going to do nothing. So that is pretty sweet. I'm just going to go for the Ancient Power now. Not even going to worry about Dig. I want to save at least one, though, in case it ends up using Noctowl or uh, whatever its other Pokemon is. Uh, Pharaoh. And we get a critical, and that's pretty awesome, because that means it's going to be a two-hit KO, and I get a stat raise. Oh man, that's huge. That's huge. So now I'm going to be faster again. I'm not going to take any more damage, and I'm going to be able to get another Ancient Power. And I score another critical. That's pretty funny. So double critical on that. That I think this game is already friggin' decided. You know, I've got plus two attack, plus two defense, plus special defense. Just all kinds of good things going my way right now. Fortunately, I'm only at even speed, so he is going to be faster. But he's going to go for a headbutt, and this shouldn't do anything. Yeah, 14 damage. But I am going to flinch. So, yeah, that kind of blows. Because it can cheat, it can just keep going for headbutt, and if it keeps getting flinches, you're gonna have a bad time. But I am able to break through here, go for an ancient power, and with the plus two attack, geez, that still only does like half. So I'm gonna go for one more ancient power before I start going for dig. Uh, it's gonna mimic me here, and I guess it's learning ancient power. Yeah. So that's cool, because that means he didn't do anything that turn. And I get another critical, so that's th three friggin' criticals. One of them didn't matter, but two of them definitely mattered. Unless uh, I got minimum damage on that first engine power and max on that last one. Anyway, your last Pokemon is Chansey, which is just going to get raped here. And I'm just going to keep going for ancient power since this is the last Pokemon. It does have the icy win, though, so that is not good. I do have a plus one special defense, though, so I am going to be able to take that 
pretty well. So we do go for the Ancient Power here. That's going to do massive damage. It is going to be able to survive, of course. It is a freaking Chansey, even though it's a plus two from Pupitar, but hey, whatever. And I'm going to still be able to withstood, or withstand that easily. And I can just go for a dig here and get a perfect continue on the semi-final. That is huge. So it's going to go for Sing. It probably should have done that originally. Sing sounds like a Legend of Zelda song. This game, I don't know. So that is it for Chansey. And a really lucky game for me there with the stat raise and like the three criticals. That just... A lot of that worked out for me there. So perfect continue on that, and this is looking really good for the final match. But of course it is going to be the final match, the final trainer always a step above the rest. He's going to have a completely random team, not just, uh, you know, one type. So here we go, versus a juggler. And as you can see, he's got all sorts of Pokemon. So, yeah, Fortress, Piloswine, man, okay, so he's got the Slow King. Uh, trying to think here of something that's going to be effective against everything, and I don't really see anything on my team that's going to be effective against everything. I'm probably going to lead with Charmeleon, since I have the greatest odds of that. The only thing that will really hurt Charmeleon is going to be uh, Slow King, obviously. Lantern, I think I can bring in just for coverage. I don't really know what I'd bring land. Actually, hmm. I don't know. Obviously, I'm going to bring Noctowl. Noctowl will just destroy things. Pupitar, I don't really think Pupitar has anything on this here. So I'm just going to go with Lantern because Lantern's pretty bulky and has double stab. So I've got three or four chances at this. I can't mess this up. Eventually, it's just going to work out, hopefully. But let's just get it done on the first one. And of course. <laughs> He leads with Slow King. So, god damn it, I'm gonna have to switch out first turn into Lantern. You know, unbelievable, dude, a 1 and 6 on that. So we go into Lantern. Hopefully, he hit me with a water move there and not a psychic. He does go for the water move. And that's gonna do nothing. But it does proc a speed fall, so that kind of that that kind of slows, and it sucks at the same time. So holy shit, it has zap cannon. I really hope this misses, and it does. Thank goodness. I've had some bad luck here with the 50% uh, accuracy moves. Anyway, we do snap a paralyze on the slow king, and that's pretty sweet because now I'm going to be able to hit it with another spark. And that might not KO on this next turn. He's going to keep going for Zap Cannon. Unfortunately, it hits this time, and it gets a critical. So that makes up for the previous turn of it missing. And now, even worse, is he's going to be faster than me. And he's just going to go straight for the Confusion this time, and that's still going to do very little. So that critical really kind of blows. I really hope this gets max damage. Unfortunately, it's not going to, so it is going to be able to live. And I'm just going to go for a water gun this turn in case he decides to switch out. And he gets fully paralyzed, which is great, but... Of course, always how it works. We each actually get hit by paralysis here. So I'm going to be able to survive that, but just barely. And I'm actually not going to get fully paralyzed, which is great, and I can finish this thing off with a water gun. So now uh, I take the early one, uh, one nothing lead here, but I mean, Lantern's paralyzed and has 7 HP, so he's not going to be able to do too much. But this is great because it does give me the switch initiative here, and he is going to go into Hitmonchan. 
So that's freaking sweet because now I can go into Noctowl. And I don't have to bring in Charmeleon just yet, as I can save him for last, as three of his remaining four Pokemon are going to be weak to Charmeleon. So I'm just going to go for the Wing Attack, and it looks like it's going to take aim here, so it's going to probably go for a Dynamic Punch on this next turn. I am just going to straight up go for the wing attack, and it does just under half. So obviously, as it took aim that one turn, uh, I guess it goes for double edge here. I don't really know what the hell that was. That was really stupid of him, but oh well. Anyway, he's going to take some massive recoil, and that might be enough for this wing attack to take it out. Unfortunately, it's not. So I am just going to go for the wing attack again. Uh, I don't want to risk anything of him going for an attack that's not going to get recoil. Not that it matters. I don't think I get to attack anyway. Even though, like, it's pretty dumb, because if I were to go for curse there, I should definitely get that curse off, even though... Because that's like I didn't get a turn then this turn. But that's just kind of the way it goes. Anyway, it's, I'm really happy to see that its last Pokemon is Sunflora, because even if Noctowl goes down, I'm still going to have Charmeleon in the wing, and I'm going to be faster, so I'm going to get some heavy damage in on it here. And although it may take me out, it's going to go for Solar Beam. So I'm going to get another hit off on it. And uh, hopefully it'll bring it under 40. Because then I can just go for the Dragon Rage, but unfortunately it doesn't, so I am going to have to go for the Fire Blast on this next turn. And even with Noctowl's great special defense and resisting that, he's not going to be able to survive it. So as the announcer says, each team down to just one Pokemon. I've got that Charmeleon. And, yeah, I'm just going to go for the Fire Blast. Hopefully it'll hit. And it definitely does, and that's going to bring down that Sunflora, and that's going to end it. So I was a little worried on this one. Uh, you know, I didn't think my team was really that great, but uh, I guess it worked out in the end. Ending it with three continues. So, yeah, that's that's going to do it for the Ultra Ball round. Holy crap, this video is long. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I guess we'll see you guys next time to finish up the Challenge Cup with a Master Ball in round two. So, uh, yeah, we'll uh, totally see you guys then and stuff. I guess we'll just finish watching my cool Pokemon get, uh, you know, their names and stuff read. Cool guy Lantern and then Venomoth. I think we used him once in this entire thing, but hey, whatever. So anyway, we'll see you guys next time for the Master Ball round. Thanks again for watching.